In Ike main mode, six messages or six packets are exchanged between these two peers. These messages they are exchanged on UDP port 500. That means source port will also be UDP 500 and destination port will also be UDP 500. One has to be initiator, so let's say this end is initiator. And this becomes respond. So before initiator sends the first message of the communication, first thing that they both do is uh, generate cookies. Both the initiator and responder independently they generate their cookie values. Cookies they protect against anti logging. What is anti logging? Just think that uh, there is an attacker. If this guy starts sending a lots of uh, VPN negotiation request, then the resources of this firewall will be clogged very rapidly, right? It will eventually stop responding. So this will be kind of a denial of service attack. So and to you know make the situation worse, what this attacker can do, he can you know initiate these negotiations with randomly chosen IP addresses, right? At at one moment he is sending it from 1.1.1. .1 .1, he starts sending it from 1.1.1.2 right? so he changes his IP address using some program and sends them to the ASA and eventually causing the dust attack or anti logging or resource logging attack cookie generation how the cookies are generated as per RFC the RFC number is 2408 the method to generate cookies is implementation dependent but it must match some of these basic requirements cookies must be dependent on specific parties second it must not be possible for anyone other than the issuing entity to generate cookies that will be accepted by this entity or to make it simple it means that issuing entity must use some local secret information in the generation of the cookie and third one the cookie generation function must be fast so these three are the basic requirement as per the rfc the of course the generation method is implementation dependent how the how the uh, you know exchange has been implemented based on which protocol but it must match you know must satisfy these criteria that the cookie generation is dependent on specific parties it will depend on who is generating the cookie what is the source ip destination ip the issuing entity must use local secret information so this guy he will have some locally secret information he will use that while generating the cookie so if he is using that locally generated information how can someone else generate the same cookie it becomes almost impossible for someone else let's say for this attacker to generate the same cookie because this guy is using some locally secret information he has some random number he has chosen so using that you know while generating that cookie so how can you generate that cookie even if you have the source IP destination IP source port destination port you can still not generate the same cookie that this ASA or this site one has generated and the third one is generation function must be fast the actual formula for generating the cookie how will it look like what are the things that it uses right? we just talked about three basic requirements right that the cookies must be dependent on the specific parties and the second one is uh, the issuing entity must use local secret information and the third one is the cookie generation function must be fast if we keep keep in mind the third point which says the cook you know the cookie generation method must be fast so for that purpose they have uh, used a hashing mechanism a fast hash mechanism and of course the fast hash mechanism is none other than md5 right so it creates a hash of source ip 
destination IP source port destination port and remember that locally generated secret information date and time it creates a MD5 hash of these values cookies placement where are these cookies placed in the message so these cookies are placed in ICCAMP header in ICCAMP header in initiator and responder field so initiator cookie will be filled in initiator cookie field and responder cookie will be here so of course initiator cookie will be generated by the initiator responder cookie will be generated by the responder when we send the first message of the negotiation it will only have initiator cookie filled here because initiator cannot generate responder cookie and this is the first message of the communication so we still don't know what is the responder cookie responder cookie field will be set to 000 right this field length is of 8 octets right that means 8 bytes so the cookie must be of 8 bytes now the question is how these cookies can prevent anti clogging and anti replay attack so i can think of a few possibilities that the attack attacker can you know use this cookie information cookies to do some attacks first one say this guy he's an attacker he has an ip address of 1.1.1.1 an attacker can request a cookie with his true ip address so he's using his real ip and just sending the negotiation so that he gets a responder cookie back and then he can use that risk you know responded cookie to launch resource logging attacks but in that way if he does that if he uses his real ip address to launch an attack then he, you know he's exposed we know his real ip address and we can really easily block it so this is clearly not a concern right it's not a serious threat here the second attack i can think of is an attacker can request a cookie with the wrong ip address and then use the return cookie to launch an actual you know resource clogging attack let's say the attacker is real ip address is 1.1.1 but he uses some program and uh, let's say changes his source ip address to look like 2.2.2 and then you know uh, makes a request for uh, vpn negotiation so that he gets the responder cookie back but there is a problem here that when the responder will reply back he will reply back to the spoofed ip address that he used which is 2.2.2 the wrong ip address so that packet will not reach back to the attacker un un unless he owns this ip address or he has found some way to you know force a route to enforce a route for this ip address so that this passes through him then only he can grab the cookie so this is somehow difficult a more sophisticated attacker he will try to compromise a system which is physically located in the same network first try to compromise this guy here the system here maybe by sending some email with a link so that he can get access to this pc so let's say his real ip address is 1.1.1 this pc has some ip internal ip 192 blah 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 so once he get access to this pc then he can launch a negotiation by using some software here with this firewall and you know hide his identity be anonymous right in that way when the firewall replies back with this cookie he can of course then grab that cookie from this compromised system now he has the valid cookie so he can grab the valid cookie that the firewall sends it to the local machine and now he can launch an attack with the valid cookie he can of course now since he has the valid cookie here he can then spoof the you know spoof it with the appropriate ip addresses port numbers and another attack that is possible is eavesdrop so the attacker can eavesdrop between the communication so let's say these ascs are trying to establish a vpn over the internet right this guy 
can somehow tap on the line and eavesdrop to the packet capture and figure out what is a valid cookie. He gets the valid cookie and he can then launch the attack by using that valid, valid cookie. Swoop the IP addresses. Even if you have uh, compromised a system inside, in that way also you can get a valid cookie, right? So these two methods of attack in, in which you in which the attacker can successfully get a valid cookie and then he can launch an attack with that valid cookie. So this concerns me. How do you think that cookies are preventing you know, the cookie mechanism, the cookie generation mechanism is preventing this attack? Please do comment, like or share. Let me know what do you think of the last situation that I talked about. Once an eavesdropper or an attacker has a valid cookie, can he launch an attack? How does the cookie method, cookie generation mechanism, those must conditions, how do they you know, prevent an attacker from launching an attack? Or maybe if he launches an attack, how do these devices, you know, how can they stop that attack? Or do they drop it? Or do they become victim of this attacker? Let me know in the comment box. Thank you for taking time to watch this video. I hope this has been informative to you.